Sonia Deville, we meet at last. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Hey, I've got a really funny first question for you. Tell me. You're all over the food world, right? Donuts and food and everything, right? Is 90% of your interviews usually like people telling you where to go when they're in town? I do get a lot of recommendations, I'm not going to lie, but um, today I've been doing media all day and not one person has given me a recommendation. Can I give you a recommendation for Des Moines then? Yes, please. There is a place out in West Des Moines called Hertz Donuts. I love Hertz. Have you been there? Yes, of course. I love Hertz. There you go. I forget that it's a nationwide thing because there's not a ton of them out there. But yeah, we've got a Hertz no, Donuts I, in town. I think I've actually been to the one in Des Moines. No, you I haven't. Have You're a back. liar. I swear to God, I, I have to look back. But me and me and Mandy do like donut review episodes on our YouTube back in the day. And I'm almost positive. I know we did Hertz for sure. I don't know which city, but I, I think it might have been in Des Moines. All right. How about this? Have you been to uh, Scratch uh, Cupcakery? No. It's like the Hertz Donuts of the cupcake world. Really? Now, I am partial to donuts over cupcakes, but if they're really good and they come out warm, I can I can mess with them. There you go. That and the other one, there's a new place up in Ankeny <laughs> called Crumble Cookies. I know this is uh, for I've someone... Uh, for someone in your shape, it's it's probably great that I'm just naming off all the junk food in Des Moines. <laughs> you know what? It's all about balance. I, I would rather do a little extra cardio to have some donuts and cupcakes. <laughs> now, are you when you do your donut, do you do coffee with it? What's the drink? So it depends. I'm My new obsession lately is they sell them at the airport, too, and I'm obsessed. They're like these almond milk, chocolate milks. Okay. Because I don't drink, I don't drink like real milk anymore, but... These like silk almond milk chocolate milks are to die for. So they're definitely my go to with a donut. There you go. I've I've always thought I've come from a family of cops. Coffee and donut is like the best combination on the planet. Coffee and donut is a great combination. Absolutely, I agree. Well, Sonia Deville for the WWE on the line with me right now. I feel kind of special that I'm the only one who's recommended anything in Des Moines to go check out. I know. I, I've been waiting for it all day. You're right. But no, you're the first. I kind of thought when I was doing the research on you, I was like, everybody probably tells her, oh, you got to go to this place when you're in town and that sort of thing. So They usually do, and I love that. I love it. <laughs> well, hey, Monday Night Raw coming to Des Moines on May 30th. It's been a rough couple weeks for you, right? Oh, what a great way to start our conversation. <laughs> I was like Come I'm on. sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it it has been, right? It builds character, and it, it is why I am the way I am. I've been through some stuff, and it's made me even stronger, and it'll continue to do the same. I just want to put on the record, I won my match against Alexa Bliss last week, and just because the referee was so aloof and unaware of what was going on, that is not my fault, and I will surely make sure that I clarify that on Monday. It's going to end up in a hell in the cell or something, right? I mean, I would love that. I would love to beat the pulp out of Alexa Bliss in a hell in a cell, yes. There you go. And hell in a cell coming up. It's the it's actually the pay-per-view after the Des Moines show, so it should be a pretty big night in Des Moines, right? Yes, it's going to be huge, definitely. Any Anytime you're the TV t before the pay-per-view, it's, it's a big buildup, um, and yeah, it's going to be a huge show for sure. It's always the one right before and the one right after because you get the lead up and you get the fallout from the pay per view, and it's always yeah. it's such... no, no. You're right though. It's it's the it's the few weeks leading into the pay per view that are always huge for or, sure. Or excuse me, it's premium uh, event now, right? Premium live event. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Just got to keep up on the terminology. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, WWE Monday Night Raw coming to Wells Fargo Arena May 30th. Sonya Deville on the line. Hey, Sonya, you were you. You started out with uh, the, the mixed martial arts stuff. Did that kind of lead into professional wrestling? How did all that kind of go? Yeah, I was I was fighting MMA, living out in Los Angeles, um, also pursuing a career in hosting and acting, and which sounds ironic saying out loud because it's like, wait a second, that's exactly what WWE is. It's like the two <laughs> mixed together. But I didn't know that at the time. Uh, I had heard about the competition reality show Tough Enough, which I'd always been into competition shows growing up. I always wanted to be on like the challenge and all that. So yeah. When I heard about the audition coming up for it, I was like, oh, let me let me throw my name in the hat and let me see if I can um, kind of get on and never thinking I actually would. But kind of fast forward a few months, I got invited out to the tryout in Orlando, introduced to the world of wrestling for the first time, absolutely fell in love with it. Never thought I was going to leave MMA for, for this, but the second that I left the tryout, I was like, I don't want to do anything else but this. I want to be here. I want to be in the WWE and I want to be the best. And so... I quickly transitioned from training MMA to training wrestling when I got home from the reality show and just kept bugging and pestering everybody 
from the hiring department until finally they brought me back out for another tryout. And then the rest is kind of history. That was seven years ago. Wow, really? Seven? I know. It's crazy, right? <laughs> no, it, it really, really is. Uh, Sonia DeVille on the line talking about uh, just a little bit of everything today. What was your martial art of choice when you were growing up and before uh, when you were getting into MMA? So I started, um, I started judo and boxing at the same time, and then I kind of transitioned quickly into jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai um, and still some boxing. So I would say my, my favorite was um, probably boxing. Um, okay. I worked with a boxing coach in LA that we just hit it off and I really just got into striking. Um, but I was scrappy on the ground too. And yeah, kind of, kind of well-rounded. Now, as we look forward to uh, the WWE and everything, what do you have coming up? What's the plan at this point, Sonia? Listen, the plan is that whether I have my WWE official title or not, I am the boss of my own fate and my own destiny. And I always, have control over my life. So whether I'm controlling things from a suit and tie or from inside the ring, I'm going to take over and I'm going to run the show. I will tell you this, and you pull off a suit and tie better than most people on the planet. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I do take a lot of pride in my suit collection. It's actually sitting right behind me right now. How many suits do you have? Because I, I can almost guarantee it's more than me. Oh, gosh, let me look. Um, <laughs> by, like, a guesstimate, maybe, like, 30. Wow, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe like 30. Do you wear them all or do, like, do you have favorites? Of, I, okay, this is a really dumb question, but now I'm curious. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I wear, I've worn them all on TV, actually. Um, I think I might have like one or two new ones that I haven't worn yet, but you know, I'll, I'll switch them up to, I'll change the tie, I'll change the cuff links, I'll change the shirt color or the chains that I wear around the tie. Like, I'll just like change little things to make them different because if I, wore a new suit every week i'm on both brands i would have like five thousand suits and they all have to be custom made because finding a good tailored women's suit is so hard yeah um so yeah i i do wear them all my favorite is probably i have this one it's like a beetlejuice one it's like thick thick pinstripe black and like cool. i mean like blue and black it's really cool and then i have like a light pink one that i've worn on tv that actually is really flattering with a black shirt and a black tie i was gonna yeah. say you black seems to be more your color definitely yeah i, I wear like black like if you look at my closet it's just like a dark shadow everything is black black boots black shirts black black hoodies black pants <laughs> i get that for my wife she's like every t-shirt you own is black i well it's just so easy and it's slimming and it's yes. nice and it's just like i feel like even like my airport outfits they're just always all black and even if they're like joggers or like less like more casual pants they just look nice you yeah. just look nice if you're in all black i feel like let me ask you this as a suit wearer <laughs> What's the most important accessory for a suit? Is it the cufflinks? Is it the tie? Is it the chain? Is it the... I'll say it's the double Windsor knot that I tie. I, I do not like a single Windsor, um, and it took me a while to figure out how to tie both ways. But I like a really thick, even double Windsor. So I like that. And then also adding my chain, I think, is what kind of makes it a little different, too. So I always have to have my lapel chain, or I sometimes do a tie chain, just to add a little kind of sass to it, you know? Perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. Sonia <laughs> Deville from the WWE on the line. She'll be. You'll be in Des Moines, right? Um, I should be in Des Moines, unless Adam Pierce tries to corrupt my life again and have me not there. So, TBD at the moment. To be fair, Adam kind of seems like. Hmm. I'm just gonna throw my weight around for no good reason, right? Yeah. I, I. I think he has like a little bit of a complex. I don't know what's going on in his in his personal life or what's happening there, but. Clearly, he felt threatened by my presence. But to be honest, if I wasn't me, I'd be threatened by me, too. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, as soon as Vince McMahon steps down, Sonya Deville should take that spot, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to shoot, natural let's shoot for the leader. top, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm a natural-born leader, and that's, that's something that was funny when I got this role as WWE official, and Adam started immediately getting threatened by it because people just naturally wanted to follow my lead. I mean, I'm just a natural leader. And so it kind of just fit perfectly. And I think that, you know, anyone, no one wants to be second best. So I understand where he's coming from with his envy. Nah, it's okay, Adam. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sonia, we wish you nothing but the best. Can't wait to see you in Des Moines coming up on the 30th. Good luck leading up to that. Uh, you get that dastardly Alexa Bliss at some point, okay? Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right, we'll see you. Bye-bye.